Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I will be talking about the module Coastal Anthropology under the paper Ecological Anthropology, Cultural and Biological Dimensions. The learning objectives of the modules are number one to understand the relationship between humans and coastal landscape ecosystem through space and time and as well as the human adaptation to coastal environments. And number two is to get familiar with the multiple methods and theoretical perspective used to study the human ecosystems and interaction with an emphasis on the coastal system. Human beings have a long historical relationship with the coast. Initially, it provided the food and security, later forming the important locations for industrial and commercial development. Now, the emphasis has shifted towards the leisure and conservation, although the former functions remains crucial. However, it is only very recently that people have started viewing the coast as a common and valuable resource that requires rational utilization and scientific management in order to sustain its attractiveness. Of course, enlightened management comes only through the understanding of the communicated coastal regions which enable the coastal managers to balance the pressure from different sectors and to minimize the risk. Scientific knowledge will continue to be the most important basis for resolving the conflict between the coastal users and interest group such as developer and ecologist. Coastal management has also shifted from traditional restorative or remedial action towards the planned avoidance of the other conflicts. Despite rapid advancement in the coastal sciences over recent decades, most of the major coastal issues have remained outstanding in the agenda. Control of the shoreline, erosion and protecting sea level rise continues to be crucial. Problem facing the coastal scientist. Destructive coastal storms still cause tremendous damage, particularly in the low altitudes. Wetland and estuaries reclamation have led to the loss of the most valuable estuary wetlands which are required to sustain biological productivity and biodiversity. Now let us see what is coastal anthropology. Coast and the coastal environment are supremely important in the history of humans, human societies and cultures. Anthropologists have long been interested in and have also been pioneers of studying and understanding the interactions between the coast and the human societies that utilize them. Throughout this course, we will explore the human inhabited coast as the social ecological systems subjected to both ecological and socio-cultural processes and forces. Coastal anthropology is related to the study of the people and the coast in space in time. Coastal anthropology is a field of anthropology specialized in the study of the coast and the coastal population and aquatic system. It aims to gain the detailed knowledge and understanding of the different practices, thinking and culture of the coastal people of fisheries and the other communities. Emil and Dennis, the notion of the aquatic system covers in particular number one naturalistic knowledge relating to aquatic animals and plants. The unstable environment of the sea and the ways in which the sea is changing. Number two is technical system pertaining to the exploitation of the sea fishing and navigation techniques. Number three is the mode of appropriating maritime and coastal zones conflict of use. Number four, social relationship among the coastal people, interprofessional relationships, professional organizations, cooperative syndicates. Number five, the risk associated with the fishing occupations and resulting responses and strategies. Now, let us understand what is coast. 
According to the American Heritage Dictionary 2008, a coastline or a seashore is the area where land meets the sea or ocean. A precise line that can be called a coastline cannot be determined due to the coastline paradox. The term coastal zone is a region where the interaction of the sea and land processes occurs as per the definition by Nelson in 2007. Both the terms coast and coastal areas are often used to describe the geographical location or region for example, New Zealand's west coast or the east and west coast of the United States. Edinburgh for example, is a city on the coast of Scotland. A pelagic coast refers to a coast which fronts the open ocean as opposed to a more sheltered coast in a gulf or a bay. A shore on the other hand can refer to the part of the land which adjoins any large body of the water including the ocean or the seashore and lakes or lake shore. Similarly, somewhat related terms are stream bed bank which refers to the land alongside or a sloping down to a river bank or to a body of water smaller than a lake. Bank is also used in the some part of the world to refer to an artificial ridge of the earth intended to retain the water of a river or pond in other places. This may be called a levee while many scientific experts might agree to a common definition of the term coast, the delineation of the extent of the coast differ according to the jurisdiction with many scientific and government authorities in various countries differing for the economic and social policy reasons. According to the UN Atlas, 44 percent of the people live within 150 kilometers that is 93 miles of the sea as per the UN Atlas 2013. Figure 1 shows the coastal region terminology. Now, let us see the coastal environment. In general, the coastal environment can be defined as the area lying at the interface between the land and the sea or other large body of the water. It includes both the zones of the shallow water within which the waves are able to move, sediments and the areas landward of this zone including the beaches, cliffs and coastal dunes which is affected to some degree by the direct or the indirect effect of the waves, tides and currents. While the term snow line and the peach refers to the area of the frequent or at least occasional wave action along the edge of the sea or a lake. The coastal environment itself may extend inland for many miles kilometer. A variety of the factors including wave energy, tidal energy, sediment supply, sediment types, continental shelf, slope and width and past geological history for example, glaciation, volcanism and plate movement characterize the coastal environment. Now, let us see the coastal ecosystem. The earth's ecosystem and its people are bound together in a grand and complex symbiosis. We depend on the ecosystems to sustain us, but the continued health of the ecosystem depends in turn on our use and the care of the ecosystem. Ecosystems are the productive engines of the planet providing us with everything from the water we drink to the food we eat and the fiber we use for clothing or paper or timber. Yet, nearly every measure we use to assess the health of the ecosystem tells us we are drawing on them more than ever and degrading them in some cases at an accelerating pace. Our knowledge of ecosystem has increased dramatically in recent decades, but it has not kept pace with our ability 
to alter them. Economic development and human well-being will depend on the large part on our ability to manage the ecosystem more sustainably. We must earn to evaluate our decisions on land and resources use in terms of how they infect the capacity of the ecosystem to sustainable life, not only human life, but also the health and productive potential of the plants and animals and natural system. A critical step in improving the way we manage the earth ecosystem is to take stock of their extent, their conditions and their capacity to provide the goods and services will need in years to come. An ecosystem is a collection of organisms and non-living objects in certain area. Coastal regions are those places where water and land meet. The coastal ecosystems are therefore the collection of the organisms that are found on the boundaries of the ocean, lake, river and other forms of the water bodies. The species diversity bound in most coastal ecosystem is usually quite large. Coastal ecosystems are extremely sensitive to the environmental perturbations. Current changes in the climate put the pressure on the stability of these ecosystems. Human culture and the coastal and marine environment need to be understood in more detail. Culture that is the totality of the beliefs that human use to shape their daily lives, relationships, behaviors and activities and ultimately their laws and the policies shape not only human communities out through the effect of the human behavior, the non-human communities of the environment around them as well. Humans can and do affect the environment around them in ways that are sometimes short-sighted and unfortunate but also sometimes forward thinking, well-planned and aimed towards the conservation and sustainability. Human culture and societies are defined by the biological and the physical environments in which they live. People who live near or on the oceans or use its environment and resources for the sustenance of recreation, develop culture, economies and lifestyle that reflects the proximity to and dependence on these environments and resources. The human use and governance systems which we develop such as the marine managed area should be constructed to provide for the sustainable use of these environmental resources and thus for sustainable human culture economies and communities. The interaction between human culture and the coastal and marine environment in the coastal region has over time produced unique cultural products, practices and cultural influences. Several historical archaeological sites exist, some attached to the region's rich maritime history with the slave trade as an important component. The evolution of the culture over the years provides people with a range of the heritage values, cultural identities and certain forms of the spiritual services as by a study given by UNESCO in 2003. Some of these landscape have also attracted the significant tourism due to their aesthetic and historical value. Equally important are the traditional knowledge system and the institution, some of which are given the anecdotal or mythical reference yet which illustrated the existence of the customary systems of resource management and local people's understanding as we appreciate the ecosystem functioning. Masalu et al in 2010 found that marine resources either used for the cultural transactions or for the direct consumptions are also part of the cultural heritage associated with the 
ecosystem providing a range of benefits for the sustenance of coastal livelihoods. Certain historical sites and landscape have however, suffered from poor management as well owing to the factors that includes the changing value system and physical intrusion calling for the concerted management efforts. At the same time, while some of the intangible heritage in the coastal regions remains quite vibrant and dynamic, others are declining in cultural significance as well. Integration of the customary system in the management of the resources indicates or is an indicative of the region's desire to support a holistic approach to management. Now, let us see the cultural dimension of the coastal anthropology. Environment are fundamental to the socio-cultural well-being of people and contribute to the people's sense of place, well-being, relationship and community resilience. Yet, cultural values and their importance to conservation remains poorly understood. In this mini review, we synthesize the existing social sciences to build an approach for better integrating cultural dimension into coastal conservation. Using examples from the coastal ecosystems, the cultural dimension of the anthropo ecological systems model illustrates the five key interrelated cultural aspects, meanings, values, identities, knowledge and practice. Governance and access, livelihood and cultural interactions with the biophysical environment. Now, let us see the cultural dimensions of the coastal ecosystem. Approaches to investigating coupled social and biophysical that is anthropological complexity are needed for addressing the practical and scientific needs of anthropoecological system. A focus on the cultural dimension help identify important interaction between coastal resources and social groups and improves the anthropoecological analysis and management. The cultural dimension of the anthropoecological systems conceptual model highlighting the five fundamental interactive and interrelated cultural aspects of the ecosystem. The figure shows synthesizing literature from the marine social sciences. Next figure shows the cultural dimensions of anthropoecological system model, the key aspects and its attributes. Cultural connection to the ecosystem is rooted in the meaning, values and identity. These are the roots of the diverse cultural connection to ecosystems. They develop through the interaction with the place and resources which engage the cognitive and emotional processes, for example, knowledge, perceptions, beliefs and entails the practice based on the skill and relationship. Cultural significance can be attributed to objects, places, relationship practices and processes. Cultural ecosystem meanings and values are often deep rooted and define a person of community. They are implicit in place, attachments and senses of place and often forms the basis of community, individual and professional identities. Cultural ecosystem meanings, values and identity are also heterogeneous. Sociocultural actors for example, fishermen, women who work in the processing plant, traditional shell fish harvesters, fisheries, biologists, etc., interact with and experience the environment in ways that shape their perceptions, belief, and held values towards these environments, constituting what Pasoliso and Derry call cultural model. Cultural models are often abstract and include the philosophical, spiritual and moral views about environments and these in turn shape the vision of how resources should be managed. Finally, meaning, values and identities are also dynamic changing over time and space as individuals and communities communicate, negotiate and refine their orientation based on their practices. Social relationships 
and novel understanding. Cultural dimension of ecosystems are embedded in the local ecological knowledge and practices. Local ecological knowledge is not simply a collection of data about the environment, but is embedded within socio-cultural processes. The local knowledge are based on the sensitivities, orientations and skill that have developed over a lifetime through actual engagement and performance of practical activities. As such, knowledge is not simply passed down through generations per se, but continually generated through practical engagements with ecosystem components articulated through language, local meanings, methods and cultural cognitive models. Experimentally derived cognitive models depends on the access to opportunities to engage in practices within social groups and to build and maintain and share the local ecological knowledge within relevant ecological parameters. Incorporating diverse type of ecological knowledge into conservation and collaborating with the alternative knowledge, holders can build the social and ecological resilience according to Omer et al. in 2012. Many local ecological knowledge based practices also serves to maintain ecosystem processes and functions and enable the adaptive management. The cultural dimension of ecosystems are linked to livelihood dynamics. Ecosystems support livelihood activities with cultural implications. Much has been written elsewhere of the economic dimensions of the commercial fishing, as well as the demographic aspect of the fishing dependent coastal communities. Coastal ecosystems also support non-commercial personal use, subsistence fishing and other informal economic activities which are tied in complex ways to the other cultural dimensions. Subsistence fishing and harvesting for example is a practice often motivated by the food provisioning rather than catching or processing species for sale and income generation. Subsistence fishing might include personal or family level consumption to meet or supplement the household food needs of the procurement for other distributed through sharing, gifting and bartering. Cultural dimension of the ecosystem influence and are influenced by governance and action. We went throughout this synthesis and implicit in collaborative conservation is the recognition that resource management and governance institutions shape and are shaped by the cultural dimension of ecosystem. Mechanisms such as the harvest control, for example, timing, location, species, quantities and techniques, formal and customary rule of the access to resource and decision making processes constitute governance. Marine governance is at once a set of the institutional that is political and economic structures and also tied to the underlying philosophies, social norms, relationship and knowledge system embedded in those structure at all scales. Culture dimensions are inherently linked to ecological processes, habitat condition, species assemblage and related ecological processes are essential to people's engagement with the coastal ecosystem. In recent years, social scientists have called for more careful integration of the ecological data into the study of the human environmental interactions. Ecological integrity is the ability of an ecological system to support and maintain a community of organizing that has a species composition diversity and functional organization comparable to the ecosystem within our region. Evaluating the relationship between ecological integrity and cultural well-being requires a detailed examination of cultural interaction with a specific ecosystem. For example, for a human community that is culturally attached to the salmon changes to the trophic structures or food web within which the salmon is embedded will have specific implication for cultural well-being in ways that aggregated ecological integrity measures may not reveal. The cultural keystone concept may offer the important ways to think about and evaluate the links between ecological integrity and cultural well-being. Now let us see human being and coast. According to the Godarzi, more and more of the world's people live in coastal region. 
Many major cities are on or near good harbors and have port facilities. Some landlocked places have achieved the port status by building canals. The coast is a frontier that nation have typically defended against the military invaders, smugglers and illegal migrants. Coast, especially those with the beaches and warm water attracts the tourist in many island nations such as those of the Mediterranean, South Pacific and Caribbean tourism is central to the economy. Coast offer the recreational activities such as swimming, fishing, surfing, boating and sunbathing. Growth management can be a challenge for the coast local authorities who often struggle to provide the infrastructure required by new residents. Coast also face many human induced environmental impact. The human influence on climatic change is thought to contribute to an accelerated trend in sea level rise which threatens the coastal habitat. Pollution can occur from a number of sources, garbage and industry debris, the transportation of the petroleum in the tankers increasing the probability of large oil spills, small oil spills created by the large and small vessels which flush the oil into the water and ocean. The fishing has declined due to the habitat degradation, overfishing, trawling by the catch and climate change. Now let us talk about the conservation. Extraordinary population growth in the 21st century has placed stress on the planet's ecosystem. There is widespread agreement among both scientists and the members of the general public that many coastal environment are in poor health. Just what is meant by health and how to measure it is different matter with no commonly accepted criteria or benchmark. To many members of the public and the medical profession, a principal concern is the risk posed to the humans from exposure to the pathogens or the toxicants in the coastal environment or in the seafood. To others, the health of the coastal environment may mean the ability of the ecosystem to support the fisheries, provide clean water or assume a diverse biota. Now let us summarize what we have learned so far. We have understood that human beings have a long historical relationship with the coast. Initially, it provided the food and security, later forming important locations for industrial and commercial development. The coastal environment can be defined as the areas lying at the interface between land and the sea. Earth ecosystem and its people are bound together in a grand and complex symbiosis. Coast and the coastal environment are supremely important in the history of the human societies and culture. Humans can and do affect the environment around them in a ways that are sometimes short-sighted and unfortunate, but also sometimes forward thinking, well planned and aimed towards the conservation and sustainability. Environments are fundamental to the socio-cultural well-being of the people and contribute to the people's sense of the place, well-being, relationship and community resilience. More and more of the world's people live in the coastal region. Many major cities are situated near good harbors and have port facilities. Coast also face many human induced environmental impact. There is a widespread agreement among both scientists and members of the general public that many coastal environment are in the poor health. And there is a growing evidence that many disturbances of the ecosystem such as the pollution over harvesting, physical disruption or the climatic forces are associated with the increased frequency or virulence of the disease of aquatic organisms. Thank you.